Lake Compounds is the oldest continuously operating amusement park in the United States. This amusement park recently celebrated its 170th birthday as it opened way back in 1846. This amusement park has a lot going for it. The park oozes charm. The park has one of the best settings of any park, nestled next to both a lake and a mountain, and it has one of the world's best roller coasters in Boulder Dash. But the park has made a series of decisions over the past few years that have arguably made the park worse. So in this video, I'll be reviewing Lake Compounds and explaining why this park is still worth visiting. Despite the park's claim to fame as America's longest continually operating amusement park, this park has had a tumultuous history. After nearly a century of stable operation, Lake Compounds was struggling in the 1980s and early 1990s. The park had an antiquated ride lineup with only one adult roller coaster in the 1927 Wildcat, which was and still is a notoriously rough roller coaster. But the bigger issue was a lack of stability. Lake Compounds cycled through one operator after another. From 1985 to 1987, the park was actually owned by Hershey Park. Then from 1987, Joseph Entertainment Group owned the park, and then they declared bankruptcy in 1991. This actually caused Lake Compounds to remain closed for both the 1992 and 1993 seasons. Funtime Parks then purchased the park late in 1993, but the following year Funtime merged with Premier Parks, who owned the nearby Riverside Park, which today is known as Six Flags New England, and that park was under an hour away from Lake Compounds. Premier wanted to focus on Riverside, so they put Lake Compounds up for sale. Cedar Fair was interested in buying the park, but instead it was purchased by Kennywood in 1996. Kennywood completely changed the park's reputation, transforming it from a rundown family park to a charming park. They started with some smaller additions, but they add one of the most ambitious roller coasters ever in 2000 in Boulder Dash. This coaster has been named the world's best wood coaster multiple times and it is still the park's flagship attraction to this day. In late 2007, Lake Compounds was sold to Park Ace Reunidos, and many of the park's issues in recent years have been budget cutting measures brought on by this company. One train operations became commonplace on their wood coasters to reduce wear and tear on the track. This was especially problematic on Boulder Dash, given its long ride duration and popularity. Although the park has started running two trains at Boulder Dash on busy Saturdays in 2021, so hopefully this continues moving forwards. And this practice of reducing vehicles on the track has been extended to other rides. There have been several visits where the Log Flume, Rapids, and Dark Ride have only had two or three cars on the course, causing glacial queues. It's also common to find a handful of rides closed each visit. The park does have a ride status page on their website, so be sure to check the day of your visit if there's a ride you're dying to experience closed. Free soda had been included with admission since 1999, but was removed after the 2017 season. The park stated it was to reduce waste, but was most likely a method to increase revenue. Many popular rides have also been decommissioned. The saddest loss has been the Compounds Mountain Sky Ride that was a scenic 30 minute journey up and down the mountain. This ride closed in 2017 shortly after the accident Great Escape on a similar ride, but the park stated they had been concerned with how difficult this ride would be to evacuate in an emergency for quite some time, and the Great Escape incident was the final nail in the coffin. And most recently, the park lost the haunted graveyard. This was the single greatest haunt in the amusement industry. This was an hour-long haunted walkthrough loaded with multiple spooky sets chained together and countless scare actors. The company running Haunted Graveyard moved their operation down the road to Quasi. Meanwhile, Lake Compounds announced Happy Hauntings, which will be a family-friendly daytime Halloween event. Not only is it disappointing not to see a scare-based haunt return, but the park will now close before nightfall most days, so the best time of year for Boulder Dash night rides was eliminated as well. I hope the park considers adding a scare-based haunt in the future, because Haunted Graveyard always seemed popular. Lake Compounds is located both in Bristol and Southington, Connecticut. The park is just a short drive from ESPN's main headquarters. When you visit the park, make sure your GPS takes you to the guest parking lot entrance off of Enterprise Drive. For many years, Google Maps would erroneously take you to Lake Ave instead. Like Kennywood, 
Lake Compounds' parking lot is located across the street under a tunnel. What's weird with Lake Compounds is how far the parking lot entrance is from the park itself. It's roughly two miles away if you go to the wrong lot. And the road into the park has some bunny hills that actually offer better airtime than Wildcat. As sad as that statement is. Because of how far you are from the park, it makes the reveal of the park magical when you finally see it. You cannot see the park from the parking lot. You just hear the screams in the distance. Once you pass through the tunnel, you are greeted by one of the best entrances in the world. It is a classic entrance and it oozes charm. You have a carousel horse centered around a flower garden, then you have the classical architecture of the turnstiles and shops, and then Wildcat is perfectly centered with the entrance. And then in the distance, you have the modern thrillers of downtime and phobia accentuating the skyline. Lastly, you have the backdrop of the heavily wooded mountain in the distance. It's really a stunning entrance. As a whole, Lake Compounds is beautiful. Having either a lake or wooded mountain alone as a backdrop would be fantastic. Getting them together makes Lake Compounds special. It gives the park a scenic feel. And then the rides and buildings are often sporting fresh coats of paint. I also love how most of the park circles around Wildcat. This classic coaster is an excellent centerpiece from an aesthetic standpoint, and it adds a lot of kinetic energy to the midways. The one downside with the park's layout is the obnoxious dead end by Thunder Rapids. There is this narrow pathway that runs alongside Boulder Dash and the lake. There are no attractions or stands along this path. You just have some dinosaur info cards along the fence. At the end of this pathway is Thunder Rapids. Even on busy days, the Rapids ride usually is a minimal weight because so few people go down there. I'm convinced most people don't even know this ride exists because of where it's located. And it's a shame because it's actually a really fun Rapids ride. And further proving just how out of the way this section is, the park has both a trolley and a train ride that transport guests over there. This section is where the Sky Ride used to be, but now it just feels dead. And unsurprisingly, this area opens late and closes early every single day, if it even opens. If you go on an off-peak day, it's not uncommon to find this whole area closed. Now the park has cleared a ton of land around the lake, and I believe the long-term plan is to connect this pathway at the water park, which will really help the park's layout. The staff at Lake Compounds is usually quite friendly and accommodating. The crew at Boulder Dash in particular stands out because they often hype guests up for their ride. In terms of efficiency, it's a mixed bag. Most of the issues are related to the rides themselves having the bare minimum number of vehicles on the track. That's not really the employee's fault. A few of the flat rides can take a while to load, but the crews working the other rides usually move fast once a vehicle does arrive. The crew of Phobia in particular stands out for how quickly they routinely dispatch that ride. Lake Compounds can be a miserable park to visit on a busy day due to the limited throughputs of their signature attractions. If Boulder Dash is on one train, the ride can easily get an hour wait on a Saturday. And many of the supporting rides will easily pull 30 plus minute waits due to equally low throughputs. I would strongly recommend visiting this park on a weekday or an off-peak Sunday if you want to avoid the longest lines. The one exception I make to this rule is if Lake Compounds has a late close. Boulder Dash at night is a religious experience and you should do everything in your power to experience this wood coaster in the dark. During the summer, you usually need to visit the park on a Saturday to get night rides on Boulder Dash. Lake Compounds is one of the parks that does keep their lines open right up till closing time, so I always finish my trip to Lake Compounds with a night ride on this amazing coaster if it's open late enough. Boulder Dash is the primary reason I buy a season pass to this park. That's partly because of how much I love Boulder Dash, and it's partially because of how expensive Lake Compounds is. Daily tickets without any discounts can cost $55 as of 2021, although there are usually deals online. And then you also have to pay $10 for parking. I think the park is a bit pricey given its offerings, but a lot of parks in New England do cost more than comparable parks in other regions, presumably due to their lesser operating calendar due to the weather. Lake Compounds currently has five roller coasters. Boulder Dash is an elite coaster. It is the best ride in New England. This Custom Coasters International Wood Coaster is a relentless barrage of airtime and laterals on the side of heavily wood mountainside. Any of these things would be great in their own, but combining them together makes Boulder Dash truly special. I have a separate review going into more detail, but Boulder Dash always leaves me breathless. 
Just make sure to experience this coaster in the front row. This is the best seat for airtime, and it's also the smoothest seat. The ride can run a bit rough on wheel seats, or as you go further back in the train. Speaking of rough, the park's other wood coaster is one of the roughest coasters out there. Wildcat is nearly 100 years old, and it rides like it. This PTC coaster was actually retracted in 2017, but it somehow got rougher. The ride has no airtime, and this double out and back coaster spends all of its time punishing riders. The ride jackhammers and shuffles non-stop. This is one of the worst coasters in the world for reasons I delve into in a separate review. I do not recommend this ride one bit. The park's two major steel coasters are both shuttle coasters. Phobia Fear Coaster is a premier ride Skyrocket 2, and it's one of the few that operates with just lap bars. The ride is super compact, but it packs in a lot of thrills between the multi-pass launch, the intense ejector airtime, and the hang time filled inline twist. Zoomerang is a standard Vacoma boomerang, but it's one of the smoother ones out there, which makes it easier to appreciate the ride's intense inversions, particularly that backwards loop. Last but not least, you have the appropriately named Kitty Coaster. Just know that this coaster is typically off limits to adults. For flat rides, you have a mix of both old and new. The two best flat rides are both from SNS. You have Downtime, a 185 foot or 56 meter tall turbo drop tower. This one offers stunning views of the area and the clock noises build anticipation. The drop itself is on par with the other SNS towers. It starts strong before fizzling out. Thunder and Lightning is a relatively rare SNS scream and swing that offers some nice floater airtime as you swing above the midway. These rides are always fun, although it suffers from the typical issue of a short cycle. American Flyers is a classic Bish Rocco flying scooters ride that was relocated from Kennywood. These ones aren't run particularly fast, but due to the range of motion on the fins, it is possible to snap them, and the operators usually allow it. Lastly, you have a historic Luff carousel that was originally built in 1898. Between the lights and wooden horses, it is a beauty. It also has a band organ, although it's rarely used due to reliability concerns. The rest of the flats are your standard mix of spinning and pendulum rides. For kids, all of their rides are in a large children's area to the right of the main entrance. I spent hours in this area as a kid because of the sheer number of attractions. To beat the heat, you have a few options. You can experience the Ghost Hunt Dark Ride. This Sally shooting ride was recently upgraded with new laser sights and all the targets now work perfectly. The ride has the usual Boo Blasters aesthetic. Or you can ride the water rides. The aforementioned Thunder Rapids is a very well landscaped rapids ride that can soak you in a hot summer day. Alternatively, you can ride the Sawmill Plunge Log Flume which takes you up the mountain. This arrow flume finishes with a sizable plunge and it won't soak you the bone like Thunder Rapids. The park also has a decent water park that's included in Crocodile Cove. For 2021, the water park got the impressive looking Venus Vortex Halfpipe Slide which complements their collection of tube and body slides. The standout slide is Lights Out, which is a high-speed body slide that winds around the iconic lighthouse. This slide has been closed for a few years due to structural issues, but it's being refurbished and it's expected to reopen in 2022. For food, your best option is the Potato Patch Fries. This stand is located near the main entrance, and while it can get long lines, it is worth it. These are some of the best fries you can get at any amusement park between their freshness and abundance of toppings. For a full meal, my favorite option at the park is Pink's Hot Dogs. The rest of the food stands are overpriced and your generic amusement park offerings. The park's Halloween event going forwards is a question mark, but the park has a holiday lights Christmas event. I've never visited their winter event due to the limited ride lineup, but I've heard it's a great event for younger kids and it's much cheaper than summer days. So do I recommend Lake Compounds? Yes. Boulder Dash alone is worth a visit if you like thrill rides, and the park is very charming. While there are some operational issues that I hope are resolved in the future, I do enjoy the park. I think Six Flags New England is a better thrill park, but Lake Compounds is just a smidge behind Canopy for the best family park in New England. Lake Compounds is a really balanced ride lineup with something for everyone. If you're a coaster enthusiast, Lake Compounds is well worth adding to a New England road trip, and it helps if Quasi and Six Flags New England just a short drive away. So those are my thoughts on Lake Compounds. 
the oldest continuously operating amusement park in the United States. While it has gotten some flack for some decisions in recent years, it is still a good park. What are your thoughts on this Connecticut theme park? Have you been there? I would love to hear your thoughts about this place down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.